Welcome to the Lookout Cookout, celebrating the history, heritage, people, and places of the Cape Lookout area of North Carolina. This episode of the Lookout Cookout is brought to you by Above It All Studios, covering all of your video recording and photography needs. Offering studio portraits, on-location shooting, HD aerial drone videography, and much more. Book them for your next family reunion when everyone's together. Schedule an engagement photo shoot to capture that special moment forever. Visit AboveItAllStudios.com for more details. Hey, welcome back, guys. This is Levi from the Lookout Cookout podcast. I'm Opie. <laughs> On the other half. He went into like kind of a rigor mortis like stance there for a second. I'm so glad people can see <laughs> yeah. what we're doing. If this ever turns into a video podcast, our boss is going to have to replace us. <laughs> That's the, the We say it all the time. I don't know how many, many times we've mentioned it on air, but we have faces for radio. Yeah. Uh, if we ever went live with like some kind of video stream or something. I'm going to need a stand-in. Or yeah, a, a, I need a body double. Yeah, I was going to say a body double. I was going to say a stunt double wouldn't exactly There's a apply. reason the pictures of us on the website are cartoons. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Because <laughs> we're real-life cartoon characters. Yes. I, I, I. I mean, I'm wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt, and you're wearing a Hulk Hogan <laughs> a Hulk shirt. Hulk Hogan shirt. <laughs> we're just giant children. <laughs> you have children of your what own. Was Tom Hanks? Big. Yeah, Tom yeah, Hanks, yeah. That's how I feel on a day-to-day basis. We're actually doing this entire show. Show standing on a giant piano. <laughs> anyway, oh, welcome back, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us in another episode. I actually have no idea what the number of this episode is. I'm gonna say ten. I'm just gonna. It's, it's a nice round sure. number. We're just gonna we, go with. We it. hit double digits. Yeah, I think this might be oh, our first go, double digit. I need episode. to go to the judges on this one. We'll yeah, <laughs> but that's the problem. Is like. It's hard to keep track of stuff like that because you have episodes like our episode coming up now that this was originally conceived as a one-parter, oh. but as we got talking to our guest, it just so many stories came out oh, that we, it just can't it you can't be contained. You can't plan beforehand to have no. You know, you, we go into each one with the understanding that it's going to be interesting talking to to whomever, uh, but you never know where, where people are coming from. What got them to the point? That they're at now and why we actually you know sought them out and tried to get them on the show that's right um and when the stories come out you kind of just got to get them it's one of those things it's either you, you go through it while you have the opportunity or you know they might not have time to get back in here somewhere down the road or yeah yeah well that's the big thing too is a lot of times the people that we're talking to you know we're scheduling weeks and sometimes months in advance mm -hmm. And so we only have them in here the one time, and then it's possible if we needed to get them back in, get back in here, it'd be another month or two. Yeah. And so we want to get as much from them, uh, you know, and wring as much out of them while they're here. And also, you know, we ended up with this one. I think we ended up with over a two-hour uh, interview uh, file, mm -hmm. and it's either we cut it down and kind of abridge it and cut down stories that I think people really should hear, or we split it. And I, mm -hmm. I, I think the better way to do it is split it. I'd yeah. rather, if personally as a listener, I'd rather wait till the next episode to hear the rest than not hear some stuff at all. Like I, I think the stories in this episode are just so good. I don't think we should cut any of it. Yeah, out. I mean, it could have easily gone much longer too. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you don't want to cut out some of those, uh, those gems of the yeah. stories that you're going to get. Um, and I mean, I don't want to give it too much away either, but I mean, it definitely had a good time talking uh, with Dan and Kelly about different things. And it's, it was a pleasure to sit down with it. And I think you guys will see if uh, you don't catch it all in, in this episode, we'll, we'll get through the rest of it in the next episode. But yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, for those you know that didn't read the description of the episode or read the title of the episode, we are talking to uh, Dan and Kelly, who are the uh, owner slash operators of mm -hmm. um, slash captains of uh, all the above. Yeah. Of uh, Everest, which is a, uh, a yacht that operates mostly out of Beaufort, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an 80 foot, I want to say 80 foot 80 San foot Lorenzo San yacht. Lorenzo. Uh, that Dan bought some years back and has basically been, you know, remodeling it, restoring it, upgrading it over yeah, the past and, few and years. And enough so that it's it gives people uh, another opportunity to have uh, somewhere to stay when they come here, well, right here or wherever. I know they've gone other places yeah. as well, but like you said, they're predominantly in the the Beaufort uh, waterway area, right? And uh, it just gives somebody another option to have somewhere to stay and to get an experience for our area. I mean, you could easily get. You know, any of the, the numerous hotels in the area, or condos, those things of that a, nature. A bed and breakfast um, or whatever. Exactly. And this is their kind of their take on it uh, yeah. with the whole Everest experience. You can come and stay on their yacht for, for any period of time and yeah. enjoy our beautiful area from a, a little different perspective than if you're sitting in some hotel room. Yeah, and definitely. And uh, I think Kelly pitches it. Uh, she's a very good pitchman. Uh, she pitches it in such a way that you're, you're not just kind of renting 
a it's hotel not somewhere room. just to lay your head. It's, yeah. You're paying for the whole Everest experience. You're renting experience. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I mean, they they're happy to you know set you up with you know the, any kind of salon type stuff. You know, hook you up with restaurant, local restaurants, any kind of thing like that. Uh, it, it really is. Um, it's a unique thing. I've I've been on the boat and it's very nice. It mm. you do you do feel like a millionaire when you're hanging yeah. out on the boat. And so if you can you know you have the pleasure of staying there overnight hanging out on the sun deck and you know just getting some sun having some champagne whatever it is uh float your boat ha boat it's a boat joke (laughs) (laughs) and so it begins so the madness begins but yeah it's just uh i think it's it's a really cool experience and it's a if maybe if it's sometime something you've been here a lot of times before uh, to the area and you want to try something just a little bit new, or maybe you this is the first time you're coming here and you don't want just the kind of the normal beach excursion That's the whole experience. Coolest thing that just from what I've seen, like, and we'll we'll plug it uh, throughout the interview at the end of everything as well. But I want to go ahead and tell you guys if you haven't checked it out, you can check uh, out pictures and video. They've got all kinds of examples of yeah, it's uh, a beautiful what site. you get to stay for. Uh, with their everestyachtcharters.com is their website. They've yep. got everything on there. Of course, they're all over social media as well. The links are all up on that website. Yep. But go check it out and see what they've got to offer. It's like Levi was saying, uh, if you've been to this area before or you're from this area and you kind of already know the ins and outs of everything, you can still go and stay with them and have a wonderful time. Yeah, absolutely. Probably, you know, you could stay on the boat the entire time or it's still pretty close to like the downtown Beaufort area if you're going to get out and see the sights. It's, it's not too uh, too far to take a little bike ride or a walk yeah. uh, and check and see things out. So it's kind of a neat take that they're doing on things. That's kind of why we brought them in here. We wanted to find out a little more about what it is exactly detail wise that they do with uh, with Everest Yacht Charters. Yeah. And just as them as people to see, you know, how they got to this point. Well, that life. was the thing, you know, we kind of brought them in, uh, you know, just to talk about the business because, you know, a yacht yeah, it's, it's is a cool concept, enough and a thing, yeah. yeah, in itself. And then, you know, it just kind of, we knew a little bit from talking to them before about kind of their past before uh, mm-hmm. all this but yeah it was just super interesting like you said don't want to give uh, a whole a whole lot away but mm-hmm. dan he sailed around the world by himself on like a 30 something foot sailboat yeah uh, relatively small boat for that kind of a, a for that kind of excursion. trip excursion especially yeah. and by yourself too he uh he did that that was over the course of you know several years yeah. um he and after that he decided i guess to switch it up from water to land and started climbing mountains yeah. and i think he said from within one year of climbing his first real mountain, he climbed Everest right. like a year after that. And that's why the Which boat- is a little spoiler for yeah. anybody that didn't already figure it out. It's yeah. not like just a name they picked for for the boat and their yeah. business. It's legit story behind yeah. where he came he, from and his roots before the boat. He earned the right to name his boat yeah. Everest. And that's, I mean, that in and of itself is just a rad story to yeah hear. it's really great and that's that's the thing the, another reason like had we tried to cut this uh interview down to one episode something like that because he had you know tons of stories just from climbing everest yeah. and that was that wasn't even until like halfway into the interview yeah. that we got to that stuff so like i i just didn't i didn't want to do the listeners or dan and kelly the disservice of cutting any of that out because yeah. um, i just think it's all worth listening to but yeah i mean then kelly uh she is you know mid Western uh, yeah, farm didn't girl. Even, didn't even come up or anywhere around. Yeah, any body of water, I guess. My geography isn't the best, but yeah. there's not a whole lot out there if there's anything at all. No, like, and she said, uh, like, all she grew up around, I'm pretty sure she said, was like bass boats and stuff, like on lakes and yeah. ponds and stuff. No, eighty foot San Lorenzo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so after that, she, you know, through various uh, tribes and tribulations, ended up uh, a couple years ago as the chemistry teacher over here at Carter Community College yeah. in Moorhead. And, you know, ended up meeting Dan through some course of action and away they went with yeah. the business. But there's a lot of details a lot to cover in between, between there. For sure. <laughs> so that's why, yeah, once again, I just it, it didn't feel right. It, it felt like whenever uh, we're going through doing the edits for this episode, which Opie and I don't personally do. Usually we usually have we have input on it, but like it really does feel like our, our baby. Like as yeah. we're going through it, and we're like, no, you can't. Don't cut that. <laughs> Please <Yeah>. don't. <laughs> But then our editor is ruthless. We won't we won't name her, but she uh, <laughs> <laughs> just so she can k- keep her anonymity. I think yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm gonna down go with, with that. yes. 
<laughs> but yeah, please guys uh, stick with us through this and the next episode. So this will be, uh, I don't think it'll be more than, it should be a two-parter, two-parter uh, sounds uh, probably right. episode. So uh, stick with us through this. We'll have the uh, part one of the interview coming up a little bit later on, but we're going to throw it to a break, break real quick. And then when we get back, I think we're probably going to cook something uh, with, something with that's fire. That's what we normally do. Yeah. We got creative coming your way, guys. <laughs> Today's episode of the Lookout Cookout is brought to you by Lookout Adventures. If you're looking for a less crowded fishing excursion, if you want to hop for one of the next to the Outer Banks' most beautiful barrier islands, stay on the boat for a personalized dolphin watch, or maybe just you want to book a private sunset cruise for you and that special someone, let Lookout Adventures be your guide. With many full and half-day options to choose from, there's an adventure waiting for everyone. For pricing, gift certificates, and more information, visit LookoutAdventures.com. All right, gang. I like your little Doppler effect. I'm so glad we don't have video. Yeah, recording. we're so dumb. It would, it would ruin everything. It really would. You can attest. I, I have to put myself in a a certain mental state to to, to start just, recording. Yeah. yeah, just to enjoy it and well, make, hopefully make it enjoyable to listen to. Well, and I don't. But think, I look like an idiot while I'm doing I, it. I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but we <laughs> we sw- have switched our recording setup recently, and so you've got a lot more floor space to work I with. Do it's so much <laughs> room for activities. <laughs> He's for those who can't see, Opie is doing jumping jacks basically right now. <laughs> can't see it, but man. I've got room to party over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ope, we've been uh, as our weekly segment, I guess you could say, our regular Epis- segment, episodic. yeah, episodic segment. <laughs> uh, we do uh, a cooking segment here on the mm-hmm. show. Um, usually, the, a lot of times it's harder than, than other times. Well, because we work it, we work within our kind of self established boundaries of we want to do something that is grill related. Right. The idea is something that you could cook if you're out on the boat or something you could cook right. if you're camped out somewhere basically something you could cook without a lot it's of prep work cook out and it's it's in the name so we yeah. try to cook out you're gonna grill yeah um and on top of that i don't know if we've ever really planned it like this but we always try to associate it with whoever that episode's guest is which is another part that comes in the difficulty yeah, well, time yeah time. We, we try not to none of our guests aren't Aren't food related? Guests yeah, anyway. yeah. So far, we've had one, and that was dessert, which is hard to do on the grill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we basically we we have a conference. We try not to just do like canned co- cooking segments that don't reference the guest. This is the Everest Charter episode, by the way. Um, we try to actually tie in what we're cooking right. based on whoever it is we're talking to. Um, so you and I were having this conversation just earlier today, actually, of like, what can we do for the Everest Yacht Charter yeah, I mean, at, episode? End of the day, you're interviewing some wonderful folks for, that you know they own and operate a boat. Yeah, let's let's just kind of water it down a little bit. Yeah. So naturally, you're gonna go with seafood. Sure. But with the scale of everything, just with with Everest, and again, you can check out their website, and we'll talk to them more in, in the interview. But you know, in the scale of things, like it couldn't be just as simple as a uh, same old seafood recipe right. that we come up with. The uh, eighty foot yacht doesn't really call to mind doesn't fish do, tacos yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Sure, and, and it, it's hard to get that tie in. But we were, I was thinking, you know, a yacht. It's this this ultimate experience and vacationing, high and, living. Yeah, it's so like, what can we do? So you're gonna think like crab, lobster tail, you know, things, something of that nature. Sure, what came to my mind. Yeah, and then the name of the boat is Everest. So, okay. I don't know about you, but what popped into my mind, Everest, mountains. Think cold. It's cold. Yeah. So I, think I, I see was where you're going. Some Alaskan king crab. That sounds delicious. Hence, the, it's a jump. The tie-in, right? Normally, a jump that big gets you a gold medal in the Olympics, but I'm gonna go with you on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take an unofficial gold medal from Levi. That's a little feather in my cap that I will be happy to have. So, so we're doing grill. Grilled what? Alaskan king Alaskan crab. Alaskan king crab. You got. I mean, oh you, you, you so go good. With snow crab legs. Um, Dungeness. Yeah. I mean, whatever you want to do. They're all delicious. Oh I'm yeah. Not they're all about equally good. <laughs> but the last, the Alaskan, just the name, yeah. is what kind of tied in the cold Everest mountain. Everybody's with me. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're on the same page. <laughs> now the good news is, um, most of the times that I've had crab, like that's not something I've cooked at home a bunch. Mm-hmm. So I was 
thinking it was going to be a little more difficult. There'd be something yeah. more to it. And they're really, intimidating looking. It, it's a very intimidating idea. It's usually something that I associate with when like me and the missus go out or something. You know, it's something yeah. we're going to treat ourselves or that, anniversary dinner. Like lap, like lobster tail is one of those things. Like there's no way I can do this at home. <laughs> right. And it's really not that difficult. Yeah. No, um, it's really not. Basically, go out and get anywhere, whether it's frozen or fresh. Um, around here, any of our listeners that are in the area, it's probably a lot easier for us be to frozen. get things like that uh, yeah. uh, fresh than it's going to be for a lot of other people. Um, so but, anyway, anyway, you want to get your crab legs, yeah, you go out and get them. Uh, of course, depending on how many you're cooking for as well, the numbers are going to yeah. change on that. Probably want to figure one or two clusters per person, I would imagine, yeah, at I mean, least. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're not going to one leg per person. It's kind of yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> so you're going to want a little extra to make sure everybody gets a, a decent uh, portion. Um, but from there, there, it's not really a whole lot more than essentially just throwing it on the grill. As always, you can put your spin on it. Personally, um, with most of my seafood, I like to put a little bit of, of uh, butter. Melted butter melted always. Melted butter. Um, lemon is usually a big thing. Sure. Uh, some, you know, citrus, if that's your thing. Yep. Um, so you can kind of put your own little spin on it. I've never, uh, I've never been, personally, I've never been a uh, tartar or cocktail sauce fan. I usually go simple with the melted butter or the lemon juice. That's that's actually usually actually cooking. The max I'm more like maybe depending on what it is. I, I'll have a little on the side yeah. after it's done cooking. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I don't, right, right. I don't cook with that either. I'm um, usually butter and some like lemon juice is you know salt and pepper things of that nature. Sure. I'm a garlic guy. I like a little garlic salt. Yeah. Um, but basically, you just throw it on the grill. The thing with the, the crab legs that you got to be careful about, though, is you don't want it to be too high of a heat. Yeah, um, it will overcook very easily. Yeah, it, as with most seafood, in my experiences, right. you, can, you can overcook it pretty easy, and that's one of those things that makes it so intimidating. Yeah. But make sure you got it on a, a low to medium heat. It doesn't really take long. You're probably looking at 10, maybe 12 minutes at the max. Yeah. Uh, of course, you're going to split the difference on each side right flip, flip it halfway those, through flip it halfway way through yeah um and then again whether you're cooking with it during or after you can always add you know with my case i'm gonna add a little more lemon at the end as well just because mm-hmm. i like mine a little more uh than like say my wife or whoever else i'm cooking with yeah so i add a little bit after i pull them off the grill and they're ready to go as i'm eating um and it doesn't hurt to have like a little side dish of the melted butter as well then right um it's just so good and for those of you who may be thinking that opie is crazy to be using uh butter and lemon and things like that on a uh, crab leg when you're going to crack it open anyway when you put something on that it will go through the shell yeah. <laughs> especially most crab legs that you get like Alaskan king crab and things like that they're going to be the shells will be perforated the, they basically do it and make them easier to crack open right. so the shells are perforated so if you brush on some melted butter it's going to get gonna in there it's going to get in there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just want to i want to make sure that Anybody people that writes in correct yeah <laughs> i want to make sure like opie's not crazy like there's a, well, a i mean i am crazy yeah. oh yeah unrelated <laughs> <laughs> not not in regards to the cooking of the crab in this segment <laughs> absolutely so basically yeah 10 12 minutes you know five six minutes on the yeah. side again low heat yeah if yeah if you're using a, a gas grill lucky you uh, you can do low to medium low heat and if you're using charcoal basically either use a small amount of charcoal or light it up get them red and then kind of let them start to gray uh, gray out um and then throw them on there and then you can do thawed or frozen uh Doesn't straight frozen too much yeah. yeah basically just adjust the cooking time uh and then when you're done with that throw them in a big uh pot or pan and take them to the table and yeah, throw something in there together. Maybe maybe boil some shrimp. Yeah, oh, there's all kinds of sides. Oh and yeah, stuff everything too. goes good with crab legs. Yeah, there's. Uh, I really can't do them any justice more than what everybody else probably already knows. You could do some of the uh, grilled asparagus that we did uh, did last episode episodes or ago? yeah, a few episodes yeah. ago now for friendly market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throw all that together. It's delicious. <laughs> you guys can check it out. Of course, we'll have all the links and everything up uh, on yes, the sir. website. So as. Uh, Depending on where you're listening to us, after you're in the car, pull off the side of the road right now <laughs> and check out the link so you don't forget. <laughs> but otherwise, we'll have all the links up on the website, as always. TheLookoutCookout.com. Um, you got it. You guys uh, phone in, email us, carry your pigeon. How, <laughs> however that turns out for you, make sure we, we hear about what's going on. And if you guys got any uh, suggestions on things we should look to in the future as well, definitely send in those ideas. Yes, sir. Um, but I think from there, we're going to probably get right into talking to uh, Kelly and Dan. Yeah, we're going to throw it to a break real quick. And then uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be coming into the uh, interview with uh, Kelly and Dan from Everest, Everest Yacht, Yacht Charters. Charters. Stick around, guys. This episode of the Lookout Cookout is brought to you by Zion Consulting, offering services in graphic and website design, software development, and business consulting. Want to take your business to the next level? Visit zioncg.com and let Zion Consulting go the extra mile for you. 
Hey guys, welcome back for a little break. Um, I don't know if we mentioned it before or anything, but I want to make sure to make it clear that uh, usually as we do these interviews, we kind of like sit down and have a little chit chat that we sometimes record, sometimes don't. Yeah, just kind of uh, get to know people. Yeah, before we actually get to the, the interview as you know it from week to, well, from episode from episode, uh, as it gets started. And it just so happened that we were already talking to, to Dan and Kelly about things and how they came to the area and, and uh, just how they got to from their past to where they are presently yep. and uh we were already recording everything and it kind of just happened to roll in through with that so um yeah with that i mean with that in mind basically we're gonna this interview is kind of start mid-conversation uh the question that we ask leading into dan's answer coming up is uh how did you end up in beaufort me and a buddy were driving the boat south from philadelphia and we pulled in here to get fuel never left <laughs> that's a more common story than yeah, you, uh, yeah. you would think and it, and it makes sense because it always makes me wonder like it is such a small town like how in the world people just end up here end yeah. up here yeah, yeah. you know, but, I would, you know I, i'll say this though i was living in philadelphia prior to coming here and uh i bet my first weekend here i knew more people in beaufort than all my years in philadelphia oh wow because you know? it's like you meet one person, and then the next day you're at a barbecue, and blah blah blah. You know, yeah. so. Well, it's funny because even when I came home uh, from Raleigh, like that was I ran into somebody, and they're like, "Yeah, I got a friend that's in Raleigh," and I'm like, "Oh well, is he so and so?" And of course, it was the same person. Yeah, and like yeah. who would have known that we two random people bumped into each other who had the same mutual friend somewhere else so, i mean it's that small town like we talk about all the time, the small town community. Yeah, I mean that's the two kind of running. Uh, themes of the show are you know the local area and, you know what makes the area good and why what draws people here what keeps people here um, and then also just the kind of idea of community you know yeah. it, this really is like it, it's a family it here is, yeah. we were um, just saying that yesterday because we went to the um because you know we were the sponsor boat for the wooden boat building thing right in, in Beaufort yeah. yeah and um so we were just saying that they had it that yesterday afternoon they had a sponsor appreciation and we were like where else can you walk into a sponsor appreciation or an event like that in the community i know every single person there yeah mm-hmm. absolutely you know and we were just commenting on, on on how that is yeah that's that's been a, a big thing the last couple people that we've uh, we've talked to on the show i mean you know businesses and organizations and stuff around here they only exist because the community is so supportive of them basically <laughs> and yeah. so i mean it's a you know it's it's nice to hear uh and it's you know it's a big deal for a lot of these a lot of these companies so so how, how did philly to travel in the world in climbing a mountain and then now now everest like that's how does that transition work i don't understand the the yachting business in general, but much less like like under, around here, I can kind of get a generalization. You look outside and you see the coast, and it makes more sense than than Philly. So I'm just like, were you always into boats? Was there something in, in that area that kind of yeah. transitioned? Look, I mean, the, the original idea was to get this boat and run uh, you know week long charters down in the Caribbean. Okay, and that's you know me Good and my goal. friend were yeah when we were heading south, kind of that was. Is that crazy. where the original like the stop came came by that you were passing through? Yeah. And, we pull in and get fuel. It actually it was pretty. We uh, we pull in and get fuel, the Gulf Dock, and um, the guy. It was late. At, we we didn't want to drive any any further that day. Right. Sure. And uh, it's got to be a long trip. And the guy, um, the guy said, "Well, you can just stay at the fuel dock for the night." You know, we were putting a thousand gallons on board. Right. So so he said, "You just stay there." And then we met uh, Jeff McCann over at Jack's. And oh, on the he, waterfront. On the waterfront. Yeah. He said, "Well." We, we met him. He said, you can park your boat here for as long as you want. Right. So you're already starting to so, meet the right people. Yeah, so then, we, <laughs> then we pulled the boat over there, which probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> In hindsight. <laughs> and then we, we parked there for a while. And then the uh, the boat parade, what, what do you call it? The flotilla. The was flotilla. flotilla, yeah. So we met a bunch of people, and they're like, oh, let's be in the flotilla. So... You know, the, all these so you pull in for gas, and then all of a sudden, I know, you're just getting part in of, line. Part of the parade, de- <laughs> put the lights decorating the boat, and then part of the flotilla. You know, I don't know what their our, our entrance was. Is you got a free night at the town dock in Beaufort, right? So, so we drove the boat over there in the flotilla, parked the boat. <laughs> you know, and then the next morning we were both like neither of us wanted to <laughs> continue. <drive. laughs> And uh, and I told Dave, I said, well, let's just see how much it would cost to stay here. Right. And Beaufort Docks had great winter rates. They said, you, you know, you can stay here till April. 
both of us like yeah, we don't we didn't want to go any further <laughs> it kind of answered so, the question for you yeah it sounds well, that's like yeah. it so we just uh we stayed and i met my beautiful girlfriend <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I think you should rewind i think you should tell them because what was it you told me when you were in school just reading what was it like was it would it have been tom sawyer type books just adventure type books mm-hmm. that kind of inspired him just so did this stuff to, with you? Uh, yeah, well, the years. well, you know, I mean, before I bought this boat, I had a 32-foot sailboat, which I sailed around the world. Right. And uh, so that, and I, I used to hang out with a lot of people on bigger boats. Right. I mean, I had my little boat, but then there were a lot of people with bigger boats. And I was like, oh, these boats are a lot, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot nicer on the bigger boat than right. on the little boat. So uh, anyway, it seemed like a good idea. So See, when like you, even thirty two foot doesn't even sound like that small to me. Yeah, I mean, but I, I, but going crazy. around going around the world, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's on the smaller side. Of things. No, no, I definitely. <laughs> feel that Especially by yeah, when the, and the seas are the seas are high as long as the boat yeah. is uh, long. What so. the hell are you doing it doing it solo? That's the other thing. <laughs> you know, I, I thought yeah. I had heard, but I was like, no, he probably had like somebody. With, yeah, so you know, I, but I tell everybody, I said, I'd rather be lonely than irritated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and I hope my wife doesn't listen to any of this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use that on her and she's going to be mad. Well, that that boat is, the interior is probably half the size of, of this room here. Wow. And could you Jeez. imagine you and your wife in this room together? No. Up to, <laughs> no. Uh, no, no, no. Up to a couple minutes, maybe. Well, yeah, but I think the longest trip was from Galapagos Islands to Marquesas, and I think that was 26 days. So, can you imagine just being with one other person that close to one another? Yeah. But imagine yeah. the just, flip side of that. He went 26 days without muttering a word to a soul. Did, did you well, like that whole time? I mean, he talked to himself. Yeah. So, so, did you have a I Wilson mean, or like anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. No, but but that that's that's a problem though on a small little boat. It's uh, uh it can be irritating. I mean, with one other yeah. person. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, well, why do you keep doing that? <laughs> like whatever it is, you know, right. little. I mean, little. Well, even if you're together. doing something to help one another, it still you turn around and you're bumping into one. Well, that's it. Every yeah. few seconds, yeah. I can imagine. But, but on, 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 I mean, on, on the downside though, when you when you roll into a place like Galapagos Islands. It would have been nice to have somebody to right, kind of like share a, a with you. someone to say, "Oh wow, look at that!" Because yeah. when you're by yeah. yourself, you're like, mm. to give hey, wow. give hey, you that perspective. Nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah who do like... you say, "Wow, you know, let's <laughs> go do this," or you know? Yeah, well, that's you know, that's the, uh... and I feel sorry. I feel sorry for all the people. So look, 26 days, you roll into the Marquesas Islands. I feel bad for the guy. Who the just first happened guy that to sit, sit, <laughs> sit at the bar still next to me? It like, could have been anybody. He was. Like, right, right, they were going to be your new right, best only, The guy just wanted to come for a beer and just relax, <laughs> and then he, he chose to sit next to me and it's, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> having not talked to anybody for that you know amount of time. What possessed you to want to do like that kind of trip? I mean, I, under, I understand now because of the, the size uh, restraints alone, why doing it solo makes sense. But I mean, like that's. If that the it's whole big, part of that that particular part of the trip was twenty six days, I mean I can only imagine the entirety of the trip. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean it was uh, I mean years. I think I spent five years doing it. Now a lot of that was leave. I'd leave the boat in Australia, fly back. Right. right. Leave the boat in New Zealand, fly back Africa. You know, come back. But um, I would have in hindsight, I, I, I would have got a bigger boat and uh, mm-hmm. done it with somebody else. Right. Which I think that would have been preferable. Which proper so. response would be. Your we, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that was before. That was before. <laughs> you can't <laughs> fault him for that. Yeah. But in hindsight, I'm sure that doesn't mean you you don't you definitely don't regret no, doing no, it by yourself. No, no, I, no, it had no, to have been no, a very no. unique experience. No, 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 it was. I mean, just. What made no, you want to no. sail around the world? I mean, you just wake up one day and just like I'm going to do it. Or no, like... I, I mean, when I was a kid, I read all the adventure books. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's a guy called Slocum. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the first one to sail around the world by himself, and that kind of. It does was a neat thing. I mean, I like, I, I, I actually when I, I lived in Hawaii for a while, and my first boat trip was, uh, I was crew on a boat from Hawaii to Tahiti. Uh, I think there were about ten of us on board, right. and it's like, that was good, but uh, it. 
I'd prefer to be able to make the choices, you know. Right. As how, to, how long of a trip is that? Uh, Hawaii to Tahiti, mm-hmm. I think it was <coughs> three weeks. Okay. So, and this de- was a decent. 76, it was a 76 foot sail. Right, right, right. So, it was, uh, but, uh, but it, it, it's, and, and, and I've crewed on a lot of other boats, and it's kind of a pain to um, have somebody else make all the decisions. You sure. Know? Right. And, and they're not bad decisions, sure. but it's just, it's nice. When you're not making your own decisions. Right. Mean, when you don't have it, that yeah. control, regardless of how control. good or bad the decisions right. are, if you don't have that control, it yeah. can be frustrating. I mean, yeah. it's just be nice to be able to, like, you know, I'm in the Galapagos. All right. This, well, that, there weren't a whole lot of options there, but because, um, I mean, you go from Galapagos, I mean, you go from Panama, you go through the canal, Panama, go to Galapagos, go to Marquesas, go to Tahiti, and then New Zealand. I mean, right. there aren't a whole lot of options as right. far as, uh, but, but when and, 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 and everything else. What as, was your uh, route? Where did you start? And then how, I went from Jersey to Italy. Turn around. That's a hell of a way to start. Yeah, no, I went the wrong way. I, I got Dilly's like, I'm going the wrong way. So I turned around, Caribbean, through the canal, Clocks of Marquesas, New Zealand, to, uh, Australia, Bali, uh, South Africa, Brazil, Caribbean, Jersey. Wow. So, and you said awesome. you said that wasn't all in one fell swoop. You said no, you would leave the boat and fly. Like, what I, were how long were like your breaks? Where like you six leave months. With, oh, I was okay. doing a computer consulting at the time. Gotcha. I was going to so, ask, did you like saved up, or if you were doing something along the way? No, I was uh, I was doing computer consulting at the time. So actually, it was good because six months on the boat. I tell you what. It was so nice just to sit at a desk in an office. You know? <laughs> See, that's about as extreme on both sides. Yeah. As, well, as, right. As you can get. It, but 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 it was nice. Like I said, it's just so nice just to be able to sit at a desk and there's air conditioning and yeah. there's, uh, <laughs> showers, TV, and showers, showers and everything. <laughs> yeah. But then after six months of that, it's like, ah, oh, get me back to that right. boat. You yeah. Know? It does mean but, that's a good balance that you're back, bouncing back and forth. Between well, it was. Yeah. Really. And 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 I did find you know because. Uh, when you're going around the world, there you run into the same people also going around the world, yeah. and I think a lot of them were struggling a little bit because they had in, they were a lot of times they had sold the house. Mostly, I would say, more likely than not they were retired people, right? And the uh, uh, they were struggling a little bit because it is tough, you know. I mean, to, you've got uh, nothing to fall back on if anything just goes. Yeah, and weary, but just yeah. constant. Every day on that damn boat, just you know, and and nothing to really look forward to, like a change. I mean, right. Yeah. Uh, so I, it was nice because you know it'd be like you know just another couple <coughs> of months. Because after about four or five months, you're like you know, I'm ready to get off the boat. Right? Yeah. Because you know what it, it is tough, and and you would think it'd be kind of cool. You know, you're rolling somewhere like uh, Tahiti. Was that the trip it was a lot where you of work. were saying that the kids were hanging off of the boat, and or was that was that, that was it? Haiti? I think yeah. it was a different trip, but uh, yeah. but it, but it, it's it's anyway. I mean, it was it was a nice change to be able to go, you know. And after uh, again, after six months sitting in an office, is like, yeah, you're ready to get, to get out just as boat. quick so, as you're ready to get back in yeah, the office well, after a long it. trip. That's it. And uh, and uh, to be honest, by the time I got to Australia, I was kind of done. I was like. Uh, Every place was different, but the difference became part of the same. It's just, you know, it might so be a new town. But it's, it's a new still, town, but it's like, still the same. You're just getting off the boat. You're, exactly. you're taking so a break from it. Kind of the, the whole, you know, you, you roll into somewhere like South Africa, you think it'd be kind of neat, but it's just it's another town that's not home. <laughs> right. You're exactly. Just getting it, some time off of the exa- boat. For, yeah, you know. Exactly. And then you have to go through the whole thing of. You know, meeting new people and this that, yeah. which is kind of neat, but it's also it is tiring though. Sure. I mean, it's. Uh, Do you think part of that might have been because you were solo? Uh, I doing think that so. A lot? Yeah. Like yeah. You, if you had another person there to kind of give you that, you I know, think so. You can bounce back and forth with, and yeah. also have that a different perspective. Although yes, but although I think um, if you had somebody with you, you may not go seek other people out. Sure. Because right. you'd be content just to the you, two of you kind of remain. stay. Right. Yeah. You, you can just sit there together and, 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 and being by myself, it kind of forced me. Cause, you know, I, I mean, I think everybody wants to go have some other companionship. So it sure. did kind of force you to go out and, and meet yeah. other people. You, you almost would have been more kind of isolated if you had gone with someone else because you wouldn't have like immersed yourself in the places that you went uh, yeah, as yeah, much I think so yeah what was your favorite place 
Um, probably New Zealand. New Zealand seems beautiful. Just and, just from watching Lord of the Rings. It, it <laughs> but you know what? You know it's kind of funny. Cause so so I get to New Zealand. I you know I roll into it was uh, during the uh, um, the America's Cup oh, one right. year. I forgot what year that was. But so you, you go to the marina. And the guy, uh, the marina, uh, the, the the dock master. Oh, you want to come over to dinner tonight? Okay, so I go to dinner. I go to get some new shoes. The the person selling shoes. You want to come to dinner? Tonight? <laughs> I mean, they're so friendly. I ended up eating like five dinners. Oh, it's just like everywhere you went. You know, I went to get an airplane ticket back to to America, and you know, so it's gonna take a while. Here, you want a glass of wine? You know, and then you'd go out with the the girl riding the airplane ticket. It was just. But then what I realized is these people are. So <laughs> they're like, happy to see they're just happy face. to see somebody else so like, it's like it us in like, Beaufort you know, it is. Actually, it's, like, it's exactly like that in Beaufort because when we see somebody we pass new, on them it's yeah. like hey where are hey. you from yeah, tell us about the outside world what's going on? let's go let's go grab a beer yeah. no, actually you no know, it actually that is it, it's very much like Beaufort in that way it's yeah that you just kind of and, and it is true that if we see somebody that looks like they're not from here you got another story. We got it. Where are you like, from? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, well, that's it, because we get a little tired of the... <laughs> <laughs> all the everybody, all the locals know each other's stories. Right, we've heard that forward, story. Though. Come on, we've heard that story <laughs> yeah. before. So, I mean, I mean, so it is nice to hear different... I mean, Beaufort's a great town, but there's so <laughs> few people there that well, you, you you meet everyone very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so right. actually, well, yeah. tourist season is, is, is uh, very refreshing because you're like, oh, yeah. new people! New people, you new know? experiences. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea how it's it's under the guise of, of husp, husp, hospitality, yeah, 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 yeah. but it really is because no, you're no, sick of the same old people. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you know that's the same thing. I think small town. It's like the same reason why I don't flip people off when they cut me off. Or, or something because you probably it's not know because them. I'm a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> there's a good chance uh, <laughs> you're gonna run into them at the grocery store. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, if you don't know them, you're one degree separated from yeah, them. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's why I mean, I, uh, people are nice in a small town, but yeah. I think it's not because they have to be. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That happened to my mom once. Quick story that she, yeah. something happened and a gentleman gave her the you know <laughs> the, the one high finger side. salute. Yeah, and yeah. and she just let it go and didn't think anything of it. And like ten minutes later, she stopped at the grocery store on the way home, and the guy pulled up next to her in the parking spot. And <laughs> they kind of just <laughs> they saw her and immediately pulled out and went to another grocery store. So yeah, that is, that is that's funny. funny how it works. I mean, it it's got to say something about both of them. I mean, to have that same old same old kind of sorta at any other town. Uh, to pull in and people are, you know, hospitable and they're wanting to get to know yeah, you. Yeah. But for that same thing to happen in Beaufort and then, you you know, you want to stay here. It had yeah. to be yeah. some kind of different vibe or something. that. Yeah, well, and, and, and actually, you know, you know, I say, I mean, we, we did, we, we pulled in here, we we're heading south. But prior prior to stopping here, I had gotten a car and driven all down the East Coast to uh, to look at different places like Beaufort, South So you're South kind of Carolina. like scouting your route. So, so yeah, just to see... Uh, what would be a nice place to, uh, uh, and actually, Beaufort wasn't really part of it, mm -hmm. but, uh, usually isn't, I mean, that's yeah. what I you mentioned earlier. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, you know, you know, part of the thing I like about Beaufort, which is, <clears throat> I also don't like about Beaufort, um, uh, it's not that easy to get to. No. But that also, if it were easy to get to, everybody it wouldn't, would be it, here. it wouldn't, you yeah. know, yeah. if, if, if it was like, uh, you know, the Jersey Shore, if you're, if you were, you know, if within an hour drive you had 20 million people, sure, it, it wouldn't be Beaufort. So, yeah, I mean it wouldn't be the same. So it's kind of that's the we're we're isolated enough that we're still a small kind of very family oriented community, right, right. but we're not so isolated that you know we're a town of 500 people yeah, right, <laughs> in the middle right. of nowhere. The, uh, you know, and I um, I know a couple of years ago when Beaufort was voted the uh, coolest little town. Yeah. And uh, there was a big uh, a big push in town to say, yeah, everybody go and vote. I'm like, no, that's the yeah. Line. <laughs> don't <laughs> bring don't, any, yeah, yeah, anything, don't. any unwanted attention. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just keep it quiet. Yeah. Hush. And now, and, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but it, <clears throat> it, it does seem to be changing. Yeah, uh, th there definitely are changes. And, and it seems like a lot of kind of the quote unquote old timers of Beaufort are trying to kind of push back against that change. Yeah. But uh, un unfortunately, I don't think it's going to stick uh, the, the pushback. I think the changes are going to come. Yeah. And I think that's 
in, unavoidable in any place. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, Beaufort, I think, was one of the places that had kind of I'm like a stuck big, for as long as possible. Big local yeah. music yeah. supporter, and I always compared that same idea with the fact that like you you discover this new band, you love them, you fall in love with what they're doing and their whole vibe of everything, and then you tell some of your friends, and then they start getting more more and more popular, and then all of a sudden they're you know they're nationally known, and it's like it almost loses a little bit of its charm. So I get the idea that it's. It, you're flirting with danger, so to speak, by getting the word out and right, right, telling yeah, people, yeah. and more, more and more people finding out, because then right. all of a sudden, yes, you know, you lose that charm. Yeah, because you know, people can, people coming in town that don't have that sense of community, not like the people that have been here for a while. I mean, we, we, uh, you know, like again, I've probably <coughs> been here six years or so, and anytime anybody gets injured or this and that there's always a big push to to help that person oh yeah you know but everybody's fairly well vested in the whole in that whole thing where you get people just coming in more transient type mm-hmm. people then it's not yeah i i get it. i mean they don't have that that same sense of community sure i mean they just they haven't been there to I, and again you know i can't say that you know we haven't been been here that long so Mm -hmm. uh, i'm not saying that we're like you know part of the whole thing as much as you know people have been here 20 years i think a lot of people we know have been been here that long Mm -hmm. but also from out i think a lot of people in town came from somewhere else yeah so they they all so they're not they're not everybody kind of gets it yeah so they're not they're not it's not like you're not from around here we don't we don't want you part of this because nobody else is from here either yeah well, like a late, late, you know, you know right, it, right. it is transient mm-hmm. but they, they've come a lot of people they, they've come on boats and they just they stayed so it's um to a degree i mean that's kind of lifestyle like you're you mentioned the whole story around the world is you know at some point or another you're the new guy on the block right um, yeah whether yeah, that's yeah. for an extended period of time or not right so i mean i i get that and i think you would just like to say that kind of goes along with the vibe of um just being on the on the water and traveling like I think that. so yeah yeah you know uh, when you're traveling around I mean you, you do you meet a lot of other people that mm-hmm. you know kind of same uh, do you find out that you often like running these people in unexpected places oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you, like you met them in Italy and then all of a sudden you're in New Zealand oh, yeah you know. I, I mean like what's the chances uh, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to think the uh, I don't know I wasn't sitting in Bangkok having beer or something it's like the guy's like, I know you, right? From like the Caribbean or something right. like that. We both realized you so, knew each other, yeah, but you yeah. couldn't we didn't out know where. It's like, were you there in, in Antigua this time? <laughs> no, it, it's it, it's actually the, the whole and and, and even people uh, uh, on boats coming by here. It's a fairly small community, the the, the boating community. So, right. It was just I last mean, summer we saw a boat sitting over at the, I think the Moorhead City Yacht Basin, and he was like. Oh my God! I raced on that boat years oh, ago, yeah, 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 yeah. and it was and still. Is... Yeah, I, no, he has saw a sailboat yeah. sitting over okay. there, and he's oh. like, "I raced on that boat <laughs> yeah, was, with that this guy." Fifteen years ago, and it was the same. Africa. The same owner was still on board, and we went over there and talked to him, <laughs> wow. and it was yeah. That's I mean that's surreal. Yeah. yeah. X number of years ago, and then all of a sudden he's oh, right yeah. there. He yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were we were doing a little tour along, and we yeah. come in behind the port there, and he's like. I know that boat. Yeah. And and, and it was crazy. a race boat, so it had numbers on the sail and he said, Those are the same numbers on the sail. <laughs> and so we went we went back home and parked our boat and, and took off and went over there and sure enough it was the same guy. That's what um the very first episode uh, of the show we talked to a gentleman named Captain Mark, uh, as a friend friend of the bo- of our boss and um he He's done a, a lot of different things, but uh, he ran a charter boat business down in the Caribbean for a while. And our boss, he was in Wilmington, I think, doing something or another. And uh, Captain Mark's based out of Arizona. And he, yeah. our boss is in Wilmington and just happened to see uh, Captain Mark's boat just off, like, dock somewhere in Wilmington. So he called him. He's like, are you in Wilmington? He's like, no, I sold that, like, a year ago. Yeah. And it just happens to be, <laughs> you yeah. know, right there. Like, you wow, know, it traveled yeah. across the country. Uh, yeah. Just it happened to be where our boss was. <laughs> but, yeah, like, you're right. It's even it's though, it, yeah, that's the thing. You know, obviously, there's so many different places these people can go. Mm-hmm. But it's a small number of people doing what yeah, you what yeah. you did. So. And, 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 and Beaufort, I think, is one of those places where everybody ends up, boating-wise, anyway, yeah. everybody ends up in Beaufort eventually. You yeah. know, just right. train them coming through. Yeah. They don't really, sometimes I've heard a lot of stories, too, where it's just 
I don't, I'm not going to make it to the next town, so I better get it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, now when you came through, uh, coming down from Philadelphia and you ended up stopping here, mm-hmm. were you on sailboat at that point or were you on yet Everest? No, on the yeah, Everest. Gotcha. So you had already done your yeah. climbing and things at that point. Yeah. yeah. But he had when he was sailing though. When he was doing his... Oh, really? Yeah, he, he's been through here oh, quite yeah, a few times yeah, on yeah. a sailboat. Oh, gotcha. So this gotcha. Yeah, yeah, prior, he knew yeah. Beaufort prior oh, to... I had you had been, been here before. Gotcha. Probably in the, uh, I'd say, mid-90s. It's I, another one of those things you're through, passing yeah. to and from and, and stopped on a number of occasions. Yeah. Well, and I it, think it was just once on the sailboat. I was going south. I had just bought the boat. And uh, this is the 32 for sailboat that I ended up taking around the world. But my first trip was down to the Caribbean and back to New Jersey. And I mm-hmm. stopped by here for uh, a couple of nights. And then and then after you got done, well, when you went to finish your sail, when you were getting done with your sail, didn't you, you came in with no power, right? Not here, though. Like, but when you were finishing your around the world trip? Right. Yeah. Come, but I didn't come in coming, yeah. what? But coming from we? where to where with no power? Well, from Africa. To America? To America. <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> yeah. no, with no power, no power, no electricity. No. I hate during hurricane no season when it goes out yeah. for a couple of days. Oh. But, but, but that means well, like no power is in no engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, right. yeah. Everything Africa with with just sails, just and, manual. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which and this is still me. solo. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Believe me, it, it wasn't easy. Uh, How long was that? And I imagine the trip was longer than it would have been yeah, normal. No, but not so much because there's really only. Uh, there's only so much you can motor anyway. Sure. The, actually, right. the only problem was, um, you know, coming into um, ports and things like that. Right. You know, which I'd have to call for a little bit of help once in a while. Right. You know, yeah. get into Brazil, get into the, you know, I'd, I'd sail up to the marina, and then sometimes yeah. I need to, uh, you know, somebody come out. I don't, even, I don't even. I don't know that much. I, you know, I'm very upfront about as far as my lack of knowledge with sailboats and yeah. boating in general. Boats but in general, imagine, but especially sailboats. <laughs> yeah, especially sailboats. I can understand though when you're coming to port to, to dock or you know, yeah. refuel or anything of that nature, where you would. Don't want well, to you didn't, go well, yeah. Sail yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but the good part, you didn't have to come and refuel. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> so that, that that wasn't a problem. But trying to get into a marina <clears throat> would be fairly difficult. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know. More more difficult than anybody would would want to have it yeah. if given the choice. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's, I mean, and that's it was hard. that's one of those times having an extra set of hands on board would have been would have been yeah. nice, maybe. <laughs> well, it would have, but uh, were there any like hairy hairy situations where you're like, oh god, I don't know, I'm gonna get through this. I mean, not, obviously, you don't have any choice but to put your nose yeah, down and go to work. But yeah, not really. I mean, once I realized that the boat's probably gonna be okay, mm. I, I was. It was, you know, there wasn't anything, uh, nothing really bad. He's good, though. Uh, he but, studies and studies and is super cautious. And when people say, did you make it around the world without any accidents? And he says, no accidents. They they have a hard time believing it. Mm-hmm. It's like, after you get to know him and you see how cautious he is. You know, it's like, I didn't grow up on boats. And when I tell my mom we're going out, when we did the delivery to Hilton Head, I said, we're going out in the ocean. And I'm like, Mom, aren't you, like, the slightest bit worried? <laughs> She's like, if the man can make it around the world by himself, I think he'll be fine he, going to Hilton Head. He can make it one you know, state down. Like, you know, but he's, he's super cautious. Yeah. You know, i got to give him that. I never, anytime we go out on the boat, i got to give him credit because I, I never worry. I never yeah. have to worry. You yeah, because he does it all for you. <laughs> well, but he's, so, I yeah, mean, he's prepared. He's, he's very prepared. Yeah. I mean, he'll start studying the weather days in advance, yeah. you know, and so... I, I got to give him that. But. but 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 I will say actually and and, and, and certainly don't don't air this but uh, <laughs> I had I had one accident the whole time and this is over 30,000 miles and Jeez. uh when you when you officially round the world you kind of cross your your tracks right. and it happened in a place called Mustique down in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Mustique's like a private island like I don't know Mick Jagger's kind of ha- I mean all these everybody right. Right. I mean it's super nice and I had been there a few times before so I knew people there. Anyway, so I came in. I was pretty happy, you know. I, I knew people there. It was going to be a big party, and I, uh, I was trying to anchor under sail, and I dropped the anchor, and I was like, you know, you know, I was just waiting for it to dig in, and I still had the sail up. And anyway, it didn't, and then it caught, and then I slammed into a boat, put a hole. <laughs> oh, wow. It was like a million dollar boat. I, Whacked into it. So you pulled up anchor, got the hell out of dive. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But but anywhere I went, so I, I ended up 
uh, hitting two fouls. <laughs> and every, it all worked out well. I mean, it worked out well. It cost me a little bit of money. but It worked out as best as it could. <laughs> it did. But anyway, the, everybody's real. I mean, the people were really nice. Actually, it turned out that one of the boats I hit, they were people I knew from New Jersey. <laughs> And uh, so again, right, right place, right time. Yeah, so to speak. yeah. And actually, it was kind of funny because my mom was at a. Actually, my mom's friend knew this lady quite well, and she was like, "Yeah, do you know this person called this Megget? Because they just wrecked our boat." <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, this lady said, "No, no, no, I don't know the guy." But uh, but everywhere in town, because it was like kind of my big, like you know, I was. I was supposed to be feel like it's, it's kind of the big, uh, you know, hurrah. hurrah. It's a big and arrival. Everywhere I went was like people were like, oh yeah, did you see that boat smash into it? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> nope, no, sure no, didn't. No, no. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> so, but anyway, that was uh, so that was so one your whole trip, and then it wasn't until I know it practically the very end, the very end, end that I uh, crashing at the finish line. Yeah, no, so, it's gonna uh, happen though. I mean, it, it's yeah, got to be the best place. I would assume. <laughs> no. Yeah. And they were like I said the guy. I mean, it, this it was just a little bit of money, but uh, so I mean, obviously, if you're you know, you're sailing all over the world, visiting basically every continent or mm-hmm. just about, I imagine. Uh, I mean, the whole you know climbing all the major summits and things like that mm-hmm. is that something you were doing kind of in in between as you got to each no, thing, or is that something you transitioned into? After five years looking at water, when I got <laughs> back, I was like. <laughs> I want to see mountains. So, sure. So that was, yeah, so that was really, um, after I finished going around the world, I uh, um, I decided to climb uh, Denali, mm-hmm. Mount McKinley, and then I met this guy, and he's like, yeah, let's climb the, you know, the highest mountain on each summit. Right. And then, you know, we, we climbed Denali, I think in May, then we went to Russia, climbed Elbrus, then I went to Argentina, climbed Aconcagua, and he said, you want to climb Everest? So... Within a year of climbing the first mountain, which was Denali, mm-hmm. um, we climbed Everest. Was so, that like first mountain, first mountain, or had yeah. you like done local climbs or things uh, like that? Yeah, but nothing. I mean, nothing. Nothing, nothing like serious. that. No, nothing yeah. serious. So, um, so yeah, within a year, wow. a, a year of climbing Denali. You know, and we took a class how to climb a mountain. And we took the class, <laughs> climbed Denali, and then a year later we were on top of Everest. So wow. So yeah, we did it pretty quickly. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel like most people plan and train a year or more just oh, to yeah, climb Everest. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. And we, uh, yeah, no, we... It was one of those things you kind of just had to take that opportunity when you had it, or...? Well, yeah, and, you know, my friend, uh, he organized the whole thing, and, yeah, it was actually, it was a very doable thing. I, I, How many was in your group, just doing your friend? Um, uh, yeah, and then we hired two Sherpas. Gotcha. So there are officially four of us, but they threw us into a group with... What happens is there are a lot of logistics type things that have to be right. done so you pay a company and they, they take care of all the logistical uh, kind of like all the take all the guesswork permits uh, well and, permits yeah you have to we went from the uh, chinese side so there's got to be a i don't know better uh, um, a minder there's like a, a chinese official with you at all times right or supposed to be but right. but they're not going to just put him with the two of us so so they, they threw us in with a bunch of people from connecticut who we had known, but, but so they were doing their thing, we were right. doing our thing. But, but, but we were kinda, we were right. kind of connected. As far as the government's concerned, this is this one guy's group that he's like overseeing. It's our group, and also you know you need to get transportation from Nepal to China, and then you got to hire yaks to get from base camp to advanced base camp. Right. So they, they took care of all that. Right. right that's right. that's something that I mean. It really wouldn't be impossible for a couple of guys just to be because where would you I don't, yaks, I don't have so a, like, a yak guy. I know, yeah. right? It's like, <laughs> I got a lot of guys I can call for different things, but I don't have a yak guy on speed. Guy. Well, that's it. So, <laughs> so it was just the two of us. We hired two Sherpas and uh, the Sherpas is a, a guide essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Training. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, yeah. They're okay, because they're you know. Uh, so his main Sherpa, we don't with the earthquakes yeah. and stuff. He hasn't heard from his Sherpas. Oh wow. So he, oh yeah. He doesn't right, know yeah, the fate but, of them. Yeah. Which, which, as he explained to me, I've never met a Sherpa, but he says he's extremely close to a Sherpa because that Sherpa essentially was responsible for his life. Yeah. Right. To yeah. the top I mean, you and back have. down. He couldn't have done it without a Sherpa. No, so these guys are... I, I, think so I, mean, I can imagine that's a special connection. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah at the, and, 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 right. and, 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 and since then, you know, uh, we became pretty good friends. And I, uh, I sponsored him to come to America. So I got him a, I helped him get a, a five year uh, visa. Nice. And he'd come six months a year and pump gas in Jersey. <laughs> but, but the Which, way he explained it to me, climbing though, you know, he was explaining to me how, um, and, and you're better at, at explaining this, but he'd be climbing along and, you know, five feet away is a dead guy leaning up against the rock with the hair blown in his wind. And he's, oh, wow. it, it, and, and he's been there for years. Right. You know, they won't risk taking a dead guy down. Risking an alive guy's life. Right. How many people died on your trip? Yeah, we 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 knew six people that died that when we oh, and wow. casually, just like you know, you'd you'd have a coffee with them because you spend a lot of time at advanced base camp and everybody you know socialized. You go from right. tent to tent. Sure. So you'd have a coffee with them one day and then the next day you find out they fell down the uh, oh, the my. cliff. You know? Wow. That's like whoa. But 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 Kelly's absolutely right. So you, you're walking along and there's a dead guy just sitting there on, the, and then you go another hundred feet. There's another guy like dead. And it's like, shit, this is serious. That's intense, yeah. But, 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 and then, like we, he was saying, as he got, he was getting to the top, it's not so much, I don't think, um, as to, he, he was explaining to me some of the biggest, strongest, fittest of fit guys right. couldn't climb. Because if, if your physiology says no, yeah, you're not doing it. Yeah. And so he was explaining to me, though, how... As he was getting to the top, and he's wanting to tire, and he's wanting to sit down, his strip is kicking him, telling him, "No, you get up. You're not sitting down because when you sit down, you're it's shutting just, down. Yeah, you're not gonna get yeah. up. Yeah. If, if you so, stop, I mean, you're not his getting back." His was really, you know, instrumental in yeah. and, and keeping them going. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, 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 Dan and I and the two Sherpas, we were close to the top. We met these two Korean guys because so there's a rope so going the whole. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a rope going the whole way up the mountain, right? Right. And you have a thing attached to you called an ascender. So it'll go up the rope one way, but not the other way. So right. if you were to fall, it'll, it'll stop your right. fall. Right. And uh, so, so we come, there are two Korean guys that are just kind of like sitting on the rope. So you have to unclip your thing and kind of, you know, just kind of grab onto them and walk, you know, walk around. And like work around, around them, yeah. Work around them. So they, but these guys just sat down to rest. We get to the top, you know, maybe a couple hours later, we're coming back down. They're still sitting there. Our friends came up the next day. They were still there, but oh, frozen to death. <laughs> I was wow, like, Whoa. <laughs> that's you know, ugh. I know was, that, that uh, gives you chills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> but that's you know, you just get so tired, and you just I'm just gonna sit here and rest for a little while, and then I they just it sounds, I mean, it sounds like it would almost like just creep up on you, like yeah, yeah. Well, it would, and I tell you, I mean, you get so tired, and and and, and we had supplemental oxygen, but it's not like breathing; uh, it's just right. trickling into your nose right. a little bit. So basically, even, enough to keep you alive. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. So, yeah. but you just get so tired uh, that it would be just really easy just to sit there. I'm just gonna rest for an hour or ten minutes, and then, right. and, and then how, not how much get time going did you again, spend so. acclimatizing? Though, I mean, how long yeah, were you? Yeah, weeks and weeks and weeks. Right. What so. were you like two months? Just Probably just sitting two, at yeah. the bottom of the mountain acclimatizing. Wow. You know? wow. and, 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 and and the Sherpas were doing all the heavy lifting. So we're at the advanced base camp, maybe 20,000 feet, 19,000 feet. And every day the Sherpas would get up. They would take a tent to camp one and come back down. Then the next day they'd take a sleeping bag. Right. And then they'd take, anyway, so they, they were just taking gear all the way up the mountain. So right. when we got a good weather window, it was like we go to camp one, there's a sleeping bag, a tent food there and then next day camp two everything's all so, they're, so they sure staying were, ahead dude they were yeah, yeah. but they, they would come down every day though i mean right. they would come down to the, they would go up to camp two then come back down go up to camp three so for every group of people that they're guiding they're making where those group of people make the trip up and down once uh they're making the trip what, yeah, 10 they, 20 uh, times yeah, well yeah. <laughs> in parts <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so they kind of climb the mountain yeah like <laughs> A couple, three, a couple. four times. Yeah, uh, it, each, each trip. For, ex, ex, except for the very, uh, I don't know, maybe 26,000 feet to 29,000 feet. Because right. how many days the, uh, actually did it take to do the actual to the summit? I, I think it was four days. Is so that, the actual climb is just, you know, you go to camp one, two, three. Right. I think. And then uh, the top. But these guys, these Sherpas are, you know, they grew up at 15,000 feet. And, uh, I, re- I think we we're at 26,000 feet. And I look out the tent, and Mommy, the Sherpa's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> you know, me and Dan are like, oh, we can barely breathe, and he's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> now, I assume most, if not all, of the Sherpas are going to be local yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine a, 
anyone foreign being managing to be a Sherpa. No, and, and it just has. To, I mean, it has to do with their physiology. Yeah, the way that they, the, we're uh, born into it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, Ang Mingma, the Sherpa, like you know, we email once in a while, and he'd be like, okay, it's gonna take a little while to get back to. For him to email was like a day. De- he had to walk a day to Namche Bazaar to use the the, the, the internet. internet. Wow. wow. And he'd stay overnight, and then he'd you know walk a day back to the village. So. Wow. I mean, it, I mean the the things you take for granted in your regular. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, well that's <laughs> why I'm saying. Day <laughs> so you know he come to Jersey and the, the uh, these gas stations would put him put him up in just a <laughs> whole little house, you know. <laughs> but they had hot cold running water. Yeah. <laughs> you know. This is so much more than he was I know. Used I mean, to. See, it's like I mean for him, you know, he grew up there. I mean, no heat, electricity, or running water. If you need any water, you got to go down to the. Uh, you know the river to get it yeah oh, so for him to uh pump gas it, it was easy you yeah know? i mean it's almost like a vacation it was <laughs> yeah and then he'd go home with 20 grand in his pocket and uh mm-hmm. which would be i don't know if he'd make a thousand bucks a year in uh in nepal wow so to go back with twenty thousand wow. bucks was that's a that's that was not pretty, quite a life savings but yeah. it's it's a good chunk of money it was a good chunk unfortunately i think that that twenty grand got split up. A, sure, a lot. I think that went to the mom, sure, the dad, sure, sure. the brother, the yeah. But just that to have that to be oh, able yeah. to split up. Well, yeah, it, yeah. exactly. So um, no, I'm glad that we, we were. I was able to to help him that way. But well, hopefully he's okay. As you can say, I mean, they've got a lot going on over there. And um, before you were saying like it's just as easy to take a day just for an email under normal, normal circumstances. Yeah, yeah. so, so can I can only imagine, imagine what it's like. Uh, when was the earthquake? About a week or two uh, ago? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so hopefully we don't Because should, okay. should he have been on the mountain probably, probably this time yeah. of year? He hmm. would have been. You know, so he's got you know, the wife and two kids in Kathmandu. Uh, and so. Let's just, let's just say that they're, they're still dark right now and it's not that he hasn't doesn't want to come well, yeah, 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 it's not yeah, really... Yeah. No, I not don't. A, it's not an option right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most I, don't, I, don't, I doubt there's any. Uh... So he climbed Everest, and then he bought a boat. This episode of Lookout Cookout is brought to you in part by IslandTraders.com, your source for the highest quality name brands and casual fashion. And not only does Island Traders have amazing retail stores in both Beaufort and Atlantic Beach, but now they also have a super clean and modern online shop that will blow you away. Shop online and take advantage of web-only specials, a huge selection, and even free shipping with orders of $100 or more. You can't always make it to the beach to shop at Island Traders, but you can always hit the website for some top-quality retail therapy. Island style. So stop by islandtraders.com and get some great stuff for you and your family. Island Traders, because island time is a state of mind. Well, Opie, I think... Uh, that's a good place to leave it for part one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hope everybody has enjoyed uh, the interview thus far, and I th- hope they uh, agree with the fact that we're we're cutting it up. It's just so fun to, to yeah. have these stories, like we mentioned before. You, you kind of just gotta have it when it comes up. You gotta get it, and wherever it leads us, it you know takes us down that journey. Uh, you can kind of see why we were so interested. There's just so many stories to tell, and just it's an interesting story to see what they came through to get where they're at right so. yeah and that's the thing is you can kind of tell the uh the our the interview itself had a little bit less structure i guess you could say mm-hmm. than our normal ones like normally we have like and all of them even this one we have a list of questions and topics and things like that but the story is just kind of like so naturally like progressed it's from a little one more to the organic other. than yeah. usually i usually pull back the curtain a little bit <laughs> when people come in and we, we get a chance to talk with them we kind of do our homework and have a a series of questions that we have in mind or that we want to cover and uh, a general flow to it. But, you know, I think there's a the relaxed nature of uh, uh, Dan and Kelly and ourselves as well. Uh, you just kind of talk about things sometimes as they, yeah. as they come up. So it was just kind of finding out about different things. and It was a lot more conversational than uh, we usually do, which we certainly aren't it's doing. the beauty like... of this wonderful, wonderful podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. that we do. <laughs> but, and that's the thing. We It's not like we normally are you know hard-hitting gotcha journalists and we're doing like all the big questions Far from but, it yeah but yeah this one is definitely a lot more loosey-goosey <laughs> and going Go around with that. um but i think that's probably why it ended up being so long and why we did have so many stories is if we just kind of kept talking and i didn't I, honestly i kind of forgot we were recording There's anything halfway. we're good at is yeah. just, just talking yeah just talking about <laughs> nothing and so when you give us an actual something to talk about oh we're all over it <laughs> But I, I hope everybody's enjoyed the interview thus far. 
Um, please definitely stick around for part two. That'll be the next episode coming out. It's probably next week, uh, or depending on when you're listening to this, it may already be out. Um, but definitely check out uh, their site. It is EverestYachtCharters.com. That is all one word, no spacing. No They've got a really nice site anything. with uh, you know pictures and video. Yes, yeah, beautiful. And I think everything. they just recently had it redone. So there's a bunch of uh, new pictures. I think mm-hmm. there's video. Uh, yeah, it's a great site, and mm-hmm. on that site also is all the contact information mm-hmm. for them. So. Yeah, it's hard to do that that uh, vessel justice as well, and I think that the website and the pictures and video and stuff do it uh, do it pretty good. You get a yeah. much better appreciation for it than just hearing about it through us. So definitely check yeah. it out. That's EverestYachtChargers.com, as always. Um, check us out at TheLookoutCookout.com. Obviously, you probably know that if you're listening at this point already, but <laughs> you can always go on our, our social media and the website itself and Go listen to past episodes. Get caught up if you missed any. We're, give we're us a getting shout a out. real library of past episodes yeah, I know. now. It's, we've got a few under our belts at this point. So yeah, go with, check with that more out. To come. <laughs> yeah, anything that you've missed, go back and check it out. Go on social media. Hit us up. Tell us what you think. Any ideas, any suggestions. Uh, if you got people that we haven't talked to already or that you think we should definitely sit down and have a chat with, um, as always, shoot us those suggestions. Uh, and more importantly, go and check out our sponsors in the area. Without them, we wouldn't be doing this at all whatsoever. If you haven't caught any of them, go over those real quick. It's Above It All Studio and Photography. We've got Zion Consulting Group, Lookout Adventures, and Island Traders. Uh, They're over there on the Beaufort Waterfront. Uh, Go out and support any of these folks as much as you can. Yes, Uh, please do. It's not something we just say. Like it's it's a big part of the area. It's a big part of what we do. It's a absolute certainty. The reason that we're able to do this podcast at all (laughs) is because of those guys. So. Thank them as always. Go check them out and give them your support. But uh, otherwise, until the next time, this is Opie. This is Levi. See you guys. Thanks a lot.